Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager, Mark Roloff. joining us on your city manager's report. I'm your host Emily Mikowski joined by your city manager Mark Roloff and this is where you can get all of the latest and greatest updates going on in your city of Oshkosh as well as a preview of the upcoming city council meeting agenda. Mark welcome thanks for joining us today. And great, great to be here Emily. Yeah, it's always great to have you. Happy St. Patrick's Day by the way too. Thanks you too. I know we kind of tried to coordinate our green colors today. About as close bit. as I can get with yeah. green. A little green stripe in my tie. <laughs> Sorry everybody. So we're going to go ahead dive into the first half of our show with the hot topics for the city. Take a little break and then we'll review the council meeting agenda for Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016. So Mark, first thing we want to talk about is if anyone was here the past week, they know that Oshkosh has gotten a little bit of rain. Um, so it's officially spring rainy season here and we wanted to talk a little bit about storm water here in Oshkosh. Um, how did the, we had a pretty big storm on Wednesday, well not pretty big, but a decent amount of rain. How did it go? Well, anytime spring hits and you start seeing the thaw as well as the spring rains, you want to just double check and make sure we're in decent shape. And our staff has been out there making sure that uh, things are open and flowing well. Uh, there was a situation over on the Sawyer Creek Trail where we, as a precaution, we just closed the bridge. Uh, the water got pretty high and that's an area where kids cross to go over to Carl Traeger middle and elementary school, we didn't want to take that chance. So we just closed the bridge mm -hmm. uh, and no problem uh, that we encountered and we opened it the next day and that's okay. Yes, so very minor things happening uh, last week, but it is important to remember that if there is a major storm event or a major rain event coming, um, there are some precautions that you can take. One of those things being uh, removing items from the storm from Water the storm inlets. inlets. Yeah. During, during the winter, anything can happen where things can get uh, start to pile up over near the inlets. Now, we had a slow melt this spring. It wasn't as bad, and I don't think uh, we experienced problems because they were pretty well cleaned out. But, you know, take a look at things. If, you, if things seem to be backed up on a storm drain, you know, take a look inside. If you see something that looks like it's clogged in there, give us a call. We will come out and clean it out. No, no questions asked. Yes. Um, and, you know, the manhole covers, too, are things that you want to be kind of concerned about in the event of a big rainstorm. Because um, sometimes if the sewer is overflowing, the covers will come off. So it's important to stay away from things like that if you see that happening. Yes. And the other thing that we really try to impress upon people, if there's flooding, some people believe that all you have to do is lift the manhole so the, for the water to go in, but all you're doing is you're diverting the water from the storm sewer system into our sanitary sewer system. Mm. That sanitary sewer goes right into your house. So you do not under any circumstances want to mess with any manhole. If you think there's a problem, call us and we'll come out and address it, but don't take it upon yourselves. Too many people in the 2008 storm started pulling up manholes because the street was flooded, but the street is supposed to be the first line of defense in a storm, mm -hmm. but you don't solve it by putting it into the sanitary system. Number one, it sends the, the water to the sanitary plant. Rainwater doesn't need to be cleaned. It's, it's clean, mm -hmm. uh, but also it, it backs up homes, and that's mm -hmm. probably the most dangerous thing that you're putting yourself and your family at risk when you think you're doing the right thing. Yes, and that's another thing you mentioned. If, if your home does start to flood or if uh, you notice in your basement there's water, always call 911 if you see the water coming close to the circuit breaker box. That's something you really need to be aware of. Right, we want to make sure. And people can get shocked and, and hurt. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have any flooding in your basement, you know, make sure you call uh, the necessary folks and try to give you the right direction to, uh, to make sure that you don't get shocked or zapped or any bad thing yes. as a result of a storm. Yes, and the other things that most people know, like not driving in the, a flooded street or, um, you know, just being aware of things that are happening. Don't go canoeing or kayaking in a, a swollen river or stream or anything like that. So uh, you can find all that information online, too, on our city website. We do have uh, stormwater information under the Public Works Department's page. So go ahead and check that out if you want a little bit more information. Uh, speaking of stormwater, and we were just talking about this, uh, some manhole rehab has begun again this spring, and it actually just resumed this week. So tell us a little bit about the manhole rehab program. This is part of what we're talking about when we're trying to prevent 
stormwater for entering from entering our sanitary sewer system so what we're doing as part of our manhole rehabilitation program is we identify areas of the city and then we go to that area of the city and look for leaks in the manholes uh, seal the manholes a little better sometimes they've deteriorated after years and so uh, you know a lot of times the just the gases from in the sewer system can start eating away at the concrete we go through there and we check those out and if there's any deterioration we will fix those and that's part of our manhole rehabilitation program we're going to be doing that in the northwest part of the city this year that's a big area it pretty is much a big area. north of new york all the way over east to harrison straight up to county y sunnyview and all the way over past 41 uh, to lake butamore it's a huge area uh, only about 160 manholes because uh, it's a big area geographically, but uh, there's some wide open areas there, so not as many manholes. But uh, all those manholes will be inspected and or uh, replaced to make sure that we aren't getting stormwater into our sanitary system. And that saves everybody money because, number one, we're not getting uh, stormwater in that we clean that doesn't need to be cleaned, and it also prevents these basement backups that I, that exactly. I mentioned. And so this will be going on all summer. So um, just kind of be aware if you see anyone working on a manhole, you'll, you'll see the orange signs up uh, just to be aware. Just be careful if you're driving around those areas and be cautious. Yeah, usually they get through there pretty quickly. So it'll be an inconvenience for a couple of days, but nothing too bad. Definitely. Well, great. Wonderful uh, update, Mark. Uh, something we want to talk about here is the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I know today is St. Patrick's Day, but all of the festivities will be taking place this weekend. and. The parade will be happening on Saturday. It's going to be starting at 2 o'clock. The St. Patrick's Day party begins at 1 o'clock, and the parade will be going down North Main Street. Are you going this year, Mark? I'll be part of the parade. Uh, Matt Miller and his great group that puts together Irish Fest does this for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, it's a fun event. Uh, I get to go around and uh, hand out candy to kids and, and just really take in a lot of the fun that um, I think everybody's looking forward to spring. So this is <laughs> that first glimpse that spring is on its way. Yes, and I believe the tent, the beer tent is heated. So uh, that's always a, a plus as well. And um, the, the heating works very well. It's over in the uh, King Clift parking lot uh, that's uh, between the Roxy and Dealer Socket mm -hmm. on the west side of Main Street. And yeah, it's warm, it's comfortable, you know, warm atmosphere <laughs> cold beer it's probably a good atmosphere for adults yes definitely and so just so people are aware this that cp will be closed for the staging of the parade but it will be reopened right after the parade so uh, no worries about that think something else that we want to give a little plug for actually this will be the last chance that we have to promote this mark is the state of the city is this monday already so um, here it comes it's it's already here we got a few more days to prepare and we're in full swing and we're really looking forward to it uh, everybody here at OCMS has been doing a wonderful job of putting together everything we do to, to just talk about where we've been in the past year, but more importantly, where we're going in the future. And it's a, the City Exhibit Expo, is a, it's a wonderful opportunity to talk to department heads. You can get a lot of information uh, about things that are going on. And then, of course, we always have one or two little surprises, and we will have a couple this year to unveil. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want to know what it is firsthand, come on down to the convention center at six o'clock. Yes, we're really looking forward to it. Six o'clock, doors open, 6.30 is when uh, your State of the City address, Mark, will take place. And then after that, we'll have a little bit more time for the State of the City Expo portion of the evening. And if you are unable to make it, we will be replaying that on City Cable 10 and on our website. So be sure to check that out if you're not able to make it, it's not to be missed. Um, so now it's that time of the show, Mark, that we are going to uh, have the viewers ask you anything that they want that is going on in this city. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the question mark question is this week. All right, Mark, the question this week is, what is the city doing to monitor lead in our water? And let me tell you, I, we've gotten a lot of questions like this, and I'm sure you have as well. This is a, a big question with everything going on in Flint, Michigan. And you know, I think one of the things we're going to start doing is a, a little more regular update to everybody 
to assure them what we're doing and how we're doing things are nothing like what's been going on in Flint, Michigan. Steve Brand, our utility manager, is so committed to making sure we have clean, safe water for our community that he's been doing a lot of things. And we are constantly monitoring uh, the lead in our system. Now, part of it, we're required by state law. Mm -hmm. And you may have gotten something in the mail a while back that was called the Consumer Confidence Report. And it has a lot of charts and graphs that we're required to give you. It's a little bit boring reading, but you got to dig into it a little bit. And what I thought of doing was maybe sharing with you information that, that Steve has shared with me, but also digging into the Consumer Confidence Report so you know. So a couple things I, I want everybody to know about. Uh, we, we do have a lot of lead laterals. In fact, if you think about it, any house that was probably built before 1980, and there's a lot of them here in Oshkosh, mm -hmm. uh, likely have a water lateral that is lead. And the lateral is the area between the water main and the street and your property line. That's the lateral. That belongs to the city. And that's the city's responsibility. That's the city's responsibility. From the property line in, that's called the water service, and that's your, that belongs to you. Mm -hmm. I think you can make a pretty good assumption that if we have a record that, and we have records of all our laterals, we know those. If you have a water lateral that's lead in our records, chances are, unless you know about it and you've changed it, chances are your water service is lead. Okay. And so that is, is very common throughout the country, especially for homes that are 35 years old or older. And if you have a lead water service, does that mean that you need to change it right away or is, is it still safe as long as there aren't issues with that service? There's no need for you to change it. Uh, we are required to test the water from households for lead. That's something that uh, state mandates. Um, but what we cannot do is we can't say we have to go into your home and you must allow us in. We have to respect the rights of people to say no to that. Mm -hmm. What I would encourage people to do is if you are randomly selected for us to check for lead in the water, let us do it. It's free. Uh, we can check it. And if there's any problems, we can help you identify where that problem is. The last thing I would want people to do is, uh, is think that this is some other plot for other right. things. When our folks go in to check for lead in water, they're there to get a water sample and get out of there. Mm -hmm. And if they do find something, they will contact you and address it. Fortunately, uh, when we have done these tests, and we're required to do a minimum number every year, so if somebody says no, then we're going to go to somebody until they do say yes. Mm -hmm. We get people that uh, uh, very few problems we have. In fact, we're probably in the top 10% uh, of all communities that don't have a lead problem. So we're in very good shape. We're in the 90th percentile, which means we get very few positive reads for lead. And when we do, we promptly address them. So right. because we address the, the, uh, the, the problem that occurred in Flint was they introduced water that was corrosive at a real high pH, and it started to eat away at their pipes. Once you start eating away at the pipes, it, it's There's... Katie bar the door, we're done. Mm -hmm. It's it. We monitor our water constantly, and then we check randomly check residential areas so we know if we have a problem and then if we think there's a problem in an area we can address it right away. Um, we've seldom had to be in a situation where we've told people they have to replace their water service but if it came to that that's what we would do right. and we would be mandated by law but if you think you're afraid of the, knowing the truth what's worse is not knowing the truth and so I would encourage everybody uh, to to certainly let us in when they have it. Right, and it's, it can only benefit you by having your water tested if you are one of those people that is chosen. Um, and it is comforting to hear that the city, it, you know, constantly monitoring not only the water at the source, but also the water at the end, which is very important to, to see because it, it can change from the sure. starting point. The water leaving the plant is clean. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that's, it's supposed to be completely clean. It's just that, that it's the last 50 to 100 feet that potential problems can occur. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and if you think you have a problem with lead, you can certainly have your water tested and yes. taken to a lab. That's not a problem. And if you think you do have a problem, the first thing we tell people is if you even think you have a lead problem, first thing you do when you water, open up your uh, faucet and let it run 30 seconds. That takes away so much risk right by that one thing. Those are little things you can do if you're at the, at, 
remotely concerned about it. Okay. Otherwise, um, you can have it tested at any time. Yes, so not a big concern in Oshkosh, but uh, we do appreciate you getting the information out to us because um, it is a big topic of, topic of conversation with the state of news and things like that. So. It sure is. Yeah. So if you'd like to send a question to Mark, simply email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll dive into the City Council meeting agenda for this coming Tuesday. We'll be right back on CMR. Hi, I'm Jim Collins, Transportation Director for the City of Oshkosh with an important message for motorists and bicyclists. Recently, the city has begun painting bike Cheryl symbols on roadways. The term Cheryl is short form for Shared Lane Bicycle Marking. Cheryls are made up of bicycle and chevron symbols and they are located about 4 feet away from the curb where parking is not allowed and about 11 feet where it is. Streets with Cheryls do not have a designated bike lane but still indicate that the roadway segment is a bike route and is expected to be used by bicyclists. Cheryl markings are used to show motorists where cyclists will be traveling within the lane while also showing cyclists proper lane positioning, especially where lanes are too narrow to be safely shared. It's important to note that with or without marked Cheryls, bicyclists are encouraged to travel on streets and follow traffic laws just as any other vehicle on the road. Motorists are urged to continue to be aware of bicyclists and to share the road. Thank you for keeping Oshkosh safe and happy riding. Welcome back to City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. We are here with your City Manager, Mark Roloff, and we're about to take a look at the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016. So Mark, the first item that we want to talk about right at the beginning of the agenda is an approve the, is under the consent agenda items, excuse me, and it's approved spot blight designation to authorize the redevelopment authority to acquire 1218 Oshkosh Ave. And what exactly is this building for those of us who aren't familiar with the addresses? If you remember the AccuCom building, that the, the big picture of AccuCom, a communications company in town, they're now downtown, but they they purchased this and, and they owned it for years and then sold it to us. This is right at the intersection of Oshkosh Avenue and where Sawyer Street comes in. So you see the uh, property there crosshatched on the screen. Uh, that gives you a rough idea. The RDA has been working with the city to identify a potential extension of Sawyer Street at some point in the future. It's not imminent, it's not on our five-year capital improvement plan, but you, when you get an opportunity to acquire property, you really need to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. AccuCom gave us a price that is significantly under the market value of the property, and uh, we certainly wanted to take advantage of that to have it for future reference. Uh, we have some blight elimination funds uh, through our community development block grant program, and uh, this property will be uh, shortly demoed after uh, after we acquire it. We already did one that was a, an adult bookstore and not a lot of people cried when that went down <laughs> and we got rid of that and now this will enable us to have a good area to begin the process of acquiring property on an, as time goes on to eventually connect uh, probably Rainbow uh, Drive with uh, Sawyer Street and then uh, really get that intersection aligned mm -hmm. in a more traditional fashion. Well, that'll be great. And um, when did you say that this will be taking place? Do we have a, a demo day yet, or is that kind of Oh, demo, demolition will be within a couple months or something okay. like that. But uh, the real idea is, first, let's get it acquired. We mm -hmm. do have some requirements to, uh, to follow to make sure there's no uh, asbestos. And as we were going through the last building, we did discover asbestos. So we have to make sure that we're following all proper laws with that. and. Uh, and that's not always a, a, a foolproof uh, type of situation. So it'll be a few months before we get going on that. Wonderful. Next item we want to talk about Resolution 16-120. This is a public hearing to vacate the por a portion of the Northwestern Avenue east of Madison Street. And this is relating to uh, the YMCA, right? The YMCA has some plans to expand. Mm -hmm. And as they do that, they're, they're going to have some parking issues. And so they're looking for a way to expand their parking. And that area in purple on the screen uh, is an area that uh, is really just leads to their parking lot and if they can uh, expand their parking lot in that area it gives them more room to uh, to build on as they take away some of their parking. 
Uh, parking is a huge issue for the downtown Y. We absolutely uh, love the fact that they want to stay in the downtown area. They're very committed to this, so we're working very closely with them. Uh, vacating a street means that we aren't going to have to maintain it or plow it anymore. So it truly is a win-win for all of us. The road doesn't lead anywhere except to the Y parking lot, so it makes perfect sense to vacate it. Wonderful. And uh, this dates on this, do we know any kind of timetable or is it kind of too soon to tell at this point? I'm going to leave that to Tom Blaze <laughs> and our friends at the Y. This is their thing. They're getting okay. ready. They're doing fundraising for their expansion. I'm sure they're going to be making some announcements in the near future. Uh, we're really just helping them set the table so that when they get their fundraising target hit that they don't have to go through all these little things. This is really just setting the public hearing date. Yeah. This requires four notices in the paper so it takes a whole month of public notices before we can even hold the hearing mm. before we can vacate the street so we're ah. getting the ball rolling for them in advance. I didn't know that very interesting so uh, kind of getting your ducks in a row to make it a little bit easier of a process for them very yeah. cool. Next thing we want to talk about in the consent agenda is an agreement with the Wisconsin Public Service Corporation to extend utilities in the aviation business park and we haven't talked about the aviation business park for a while it seemed like we were for uh, a long time during the summer and now we're here again. It's taken some time to get all this done but one of the last things we need to do now that the the city's public utilities in their water and sewer now it's electric and gas and that's where uh, public service comes in. Uh, we have a grant from the uh, federal government that covers almost half of the 4.6 million dollars in cost and actually we found out it's going to be much less than that so uh, we're very happy that we're under budget on that uh, but uh, but almost half of this cost of 93000 will be covered by that federal grant. But we want to have reliable utility service in there so we can begin marketing this site, and this will get it done. And that's the biggest thing is it's going to be completely ready for developments. And uh, what is it called? Shovel ready? So as soon as they want to get on there, they're able to do that. Absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, next item here is Resolution 16-133, and this is for the North Main Street reconstruction, contract number 16-02. And this is something that uh, you had told me not a lot of people are aware of, the North, North Main Street reconstruction. Not aware that we're getting it done, but I get tons of questions from people saying, when are you going to do Main Street? Do you know how bad it is? Mm -hmm. The answer to that question is, yes, I know how bad it is. And thank you, Scott, for getting <laughs> out there and having done this. Uh, a bumpy this, ride. A very bumpy ride. We were trying to maximize a federal grant uh, with some possible state funding and we did get that successfully and this is a v extremely bumpy ride on a very heavily traveled street. You can see From, the GoPro rattling around oh, a little yeah. bit there. Oh <laughs> yeah. From New York Avenue all the way up to Murdoch it's going to get done and uh, this is actually going to be uh, formulated to have parking only on one side and then a bike lane on the, I believe, the east uh, or northbound side of the street. This will be a busy project throughout the summer. Uh, what's on the agenda is the initial resolution because even with the grants, we'll have to special assess a portion of that to the adjoining property owners. But I think everybody agrees that North Main Street is in desperate need of replacement. And uh, I've had to drive that plenty of times myself. So I'm with everybody saying it's long overdue for this one to get done. Yes. Well, it'll be so nice when it's finished. Um, and uh, I guess I, that kind of answers a lot of people's questions that you've been getting. So hopefully you'll get a little less calls on the North Main Street issue. Absolutely. <laughs> then we're going to continue through the agenda here, Mark. We've got a lot of special events coming up this summer. And we're going to breeze through those and end up on Resolution 16-156. And that is to approve the amended special event agreement with the Experimental Aircraft Association Air Venture. And this is kind of an interesting one because we don't often see Air Venture on here like we do the other ones every year. And maybe you can explain to us what that agreement is. When we adopted the special event ordinance five years ago, we recognized that there were some events, and EAA was one of them, that they plan years in advance. So for them to come for an annual uh, event permit, was really not going to be in their best interest and we didn't want to to hurt those those special events so we have an agreement that specifies exactly what services we're going to be providing uh, and then it leaves it up to the departments to to work on the the general details of it but it says we're going to provide these services but we're going to have them through a separate agreement that enables EAA to plan these events out four or five years in advance and this is our uh, re-upping uh, re of that agreement. Uh, we have a great relationship with EAA. They reimburse us for all the extraordinary city costs 
that are included. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are services that are not necessarily on their property. These are services that are also off their property. So very cooperative relationship we have with EAA. Very happy to be uh, amending this. And it really shows that our special event ordinance is working very well. Yes, definitely. And EAA will be here before we know it. And I no just kidding. already, oh my gosh. Uh, last item we want to talk about here, Mark, is Resolution 16-164, and that is the approval of a purchase of a tactical response rescue vehicle uh, for 49000 about. And that number is very low for a vehicle like this, and maybe you can kind of explain to us a little bit of the background of how this came to be. This is a, a, a two-headed approach to this. This is a very uh, good collaboration between the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department and the City of Oshkosh Police Department. Uh, we've recognized the need for an additional vehicle like this and this is a tactical vehicle for rescue situations and the county is eligible for a federal grant that covers a good portion of a replacement vehicle for them but their vehicle is still in very good shape and they offered it to the city for the price of whatever their grant match was and I believe the grant covers like 80 percent of the total cost so they're asking us to cover the other 20%. Now, why would we do that? Well, for us to buy a used vehicle, a used tactical response rescue vehicle on the open market would probably be about $130,000. Wow. We're getting this for less than 50, so we're saving ourselves about $80,000 and getting a vehicle that we know is in good shape because we've worked with the County Sheriff's Department. We're very familiar with how this vehicle is, mm -hmm. the condition it's in, uh, and so we're very happy to be uh, having that uh, added to our fleet if uh, assuming council approves it but uh, kind of a win-win situation there it really is and what kind of vehicle is this because um, you know you hear tactical response vehicle and a lot of people kind of get visions of some scary situations like Ferguson and things like that uh, what kind of things would this vehicle be used for uh, this is nothing like that type of vehicle a lot of those vehicles that that people have a, a, a view of are those uh, old military surplus vehicles that are really offensive type of vehicles. Mm -hmm. This is intended for situations where there may be hostages, where sometimes you need to get the fire department into a, a very hostile situation. You know, you don't want to think about these horrible events, but something like Columbine in, in Colorado, where the fire department couldn't get in there and treat the, the wounded because they had no safe passage in. And you think of our schools that have a very open field, we couldn't even get in there. This will enable us to get our vehicle right up to a door and get somebody in to rescue people. It is intended for rescue situations. Domestic disputes, if there's any uh, firearm associated with a domestic dispute, we'll get in there to rescue a person, get them in a vehicle and get them out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of this vehicle. It's really to protect the public and protect other public safety personnel from, from uh, getting uh, injured or perhaps killed in these types of uh, very delicate situations. More defensive than offensive. It's uses. absolutely defensive and it, it is about rescuing people from very difficult situations. Yes, and so until, uh, God forbid, we do need to use this uh, vehicle, you can find them at events like Neighborhood Night Out like we saw pictures of. And uh, I got you were saying before we started taping, watch out for McGruff. Don't, don't yeah, get too close to him when he's McGruff, in there. Don't cross McGruff, don't cross the A&W <laughs> Bear. But the reality is, is we do uh, have these out so we can explain to people why they're exactly. used. Because they're not used uh, for, for the, the situations of offensive riot type situations. That's not what these vehicles are designed for. And we're going to have policies that will prohibit us from using those in those, in those cases because mm -hmm. that's not what this is about. That, that is so against the team policing concept that right. doesn't reflect my values and it doesn't reflect the values of the Oshkosh Police Department. Wonderful. Well, very cool update there and uh, we are very thankful that we're able to, to make deals like that to save that much money. That's wonderful. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode of City Manager's Report. Mark, as always, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, happy to do it. <laughs> Again, the City Council meeting is this Tuesday, March 22nd at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 and on our website, oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. Or you can listen to it on 101.9 WOCT, which is also now online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all of your community and government programming and updates. Or check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, you can email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us. Send, send it to us on Facebook or Twitter, uh, and he'll answer it on the next episode of CMR. 
As always, thanks so much for joining us on City Manager's Report, and we'll see you next time.